Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy, and it's a babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And welcome to this first deck guide of this year's season of the Bear. And uh, we're right off the heels of patch 8.3 and the amazing 12 new leader cards that have been added. And we're going to be using at least one of those in today's deck. Because today we're going to look at the very, very strong Elven Traps archetype. So it's actually really funny. Only two cards in this deck have actually changed. Well, there's a few other ones that have gained an extra ability. But the base ability of two cards have changed. And that was enough more than enough to make this into one of the strongest archetypes of today's meta. So this is a Deadeye Ambush deck. So it's an elven based deck with a lot of traps as I just told you that it was going to be about. So the archetype of elven traps, meaning that we use the Deadeye Ambush leader ability. Deadeye Ambush means that you can spawn an elven Deadeye in an allied row and you can do this three times in the match. An elven Deadeye just is an elf with three powers, so nothing too spectacular there. But to complement that, we have a lot of new cards, well not new cards, but cards that fit both the elven and trap archetypes. Let's go through all the cards one by one, starting from the bottom all the way to the top, as we usually do. So at the very bottom we have the Dolbladana Bowman, simple uh, 3 power L for 4 provisions that damages an enemy unit by 1 for each row that it separates from that unit that you're targeting. So can go up to 3 damage if you go from the back row all the way to the range row of your opponent. Then the Vryhat Officers has 2 of them in this deck as well. Damage a melee, uh, an enemy unit by 2 if you put him on the melee row or boost an allied unit by 2 if you put him on the ranged row. If you have another one on the field already, you can use the bonded ability and you can do both the 2 damage and the 2 boost. Just a simple double uh, interacting elf that is uh, could come in handy just a little bit to boost some of your more powerful cards. Then next up is a double elven scout. Elven scouts of course trigger on traps and just boost themselves by two every time you trigger a trap. Then the elven sword master is also very powerful in this deck if you put her on the melee row or him, I'm actually not exactly sure. Uh, you can damage an enemy unit by one with her orc ability, and every two turns you can do that again. If you play an elf, however, you can decrease the cooldown, so you could technically do this every turn. There's two of them in the deck, just to be able to have some slight damage tick ticks on your opponent to uh, take out those uh, damaged units. Then a single Vraya Dragoon allows you to either move one of your own units or one of your opponent's units. Always handy to take out a row locked um, engine from your opponent. Then there's only one Cat Witcher, so one of those witches that just moves around from row to row at the end of every turn and damages an enemy at that opposite row as well. Either by one or if you're at the Dreadland Tree by two. Just a simple damage engine that can work by the end of the round. Then the Dolbladana Sentry works in conjunction with that. You, whenever an, an enemy unit moves, damage it by one or if you put him on the ranged row, you boost every unit that moves on your side. Um, this, one of the, this is one of those cards that you could replace with something else. For example, you could just as likely replace him with the uh, Vryhead Sapper, so you have a Purify if you need to. We might as well do that now, because um, I just realized that there's not much use for me to have that uh, Dolblatana Sentry, aside from with the Cat Witcher, but it's the only card that would trigger on that, so it might be better suited like this. And that's another Elf, so the Vryhead Sapper can Purify an allied unit, and if you control another Elf, you can Purify any unit instead. But then, we're getting into the traps, because there's... Only five traps in this deck, um, with two doubles, so in total that ends up at seven traps. The first one is the Incinerating Trap, so if it's triggered by your opponent by playing their next unit, you will damage that by five damage. You can do this twice, so it's good to just take out those standard bronze uh, engine units if you can manage to hit the correct card with that. Crushing Trap. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about, every trap now has a spring ability. The bronzes already had this, uh, meaning that you can manually trigger the trap and do a reduced amount of damage, in this case just damage unit by 3, but the effect will always be reduced. So crushing trap, after 2 turns, at the end of your turn you damage all enemy units on the row with the most units by 2. So there's always triggers at the end of your next turn, uh, which is very good against wide decks. So the swarming decks, like this one actually, uh, can be damaged rather severely. And the spring ability here damages all units on that row by one. But you can choose it if you spring it, which is 
a good variation on that ability. Then we have the Pitfall Trap, possibly one of the stronger effects in this deck. Uh, so after your opponent plays a card, you randomly split damage equal to its provision cost between all enemy units. So for example, if your opponent plays uh, on Neromancy, which is 13 provisions, you do 13 random damage ticks one by one. If you don't want to let this be triggered by your opponent, you can also spring it manually for a guaranteed 6 damage. So that's kind of in the middle for what your opponent might play, because of course if they play a 4 provision bronze, then you only get 4 damage out of this card. So it's a bit of a, a bluffing deck, this. You try to anticipate what your opponent will play, and your opponent will try to do the exact same thing. They will try to guess what the trap on the field will be, because of course traps are put on the field face down. Those are the only cards that actually put themselves face down on the board. Then we have the Serpent Trap. I think this card has been broken a little bit because of the addition of a spring ability but the normal ambush ability destroys your highest opponent's units well the, your opponent's highest unit uh, whenever your opponent plays the next special card uh, so they need to play a special card that used to be kind of brick brickable sometimes because your opponent could just not play any special cards anymore after you've put this on the board but with the spring ability you destroy the enemy with the lowest power, basically making this an Imperial Manticore that you can just spring manually. Um, this is very powerful. This is like Predatory Dive or anything like that, that you can just, if your opponent has one big unit on the field, that also just destroys that in one go without your opponent needing to play a special card. So possibly very, very powerful. Then, because we're um, playing with a lot of elves, Isengrim for Tiagna is also in this deck, so deploy, boost all other allied elf units by one, and as long as he's on the board, he also boosts himself by one every time you play another elf. Very powerful in this swarm archetype. LNN is also very good, you pull her automatically from the deck if you control five or more elves at the end of your turn. Very important, of course, to mulligan this card so you don't have her in your hand. But other than that, it's just a free extra 5 points. Which you do have a little bit of more control over right now. Because in the first round, you generally won't be playing that many elves. Um, because you're trying to place a few traps on the board and just try to confuse your opponent a little bit. So it might very well be that you can save Elegin for the final round. And then we have our final trap, the Mahakam Horn, probably the one that confuses most people the most. Um, if your opponent passes, you boost the adjacent units next to this trap by 4. If you don't want to wait for the pass, you can do that by springing the card as well and you boost by 3 instead. Very powerful. So this is an 8 for 8 if you play it right, but also just triggers after your opponent has passes. So those 8 points are not visible until this trap is sprung, meaning that your opponent might miscalculate when they pass. Giving you the round, giving you card advantage or stuff like that. And that works really well with one of the other new, well not really new cards, but the improved cards. Which is Ebir Hattori. Because he has his ability changed from creating any bronze trap from your starting deck. I think it was even from your graveyard, yeah, right? You pulled a bronze um, artifact even. But right now he has been changed. His uh, provisions went up from 6 to 9 I think. And now his deployability is create and play a trap card from your starting deck. This includes the gold traps. So that means that you can have two pitfall traps, two serpent traps or two mahakam horns if you want to. Which can be extremely powerful. This is one of the two cards that has been changed which has an immense impact on this deck. Um, then you have, of course have your vet, 4 power, 9 provisions and on deploy you return an allied trap to your hand and then play another trap. Meaning that you can again for the third time play another serpent trap or pitfall trap if you combine that with Hattori. Um, which is very very good. That was a card that already existed but right now it's become even more powerful. And then the big man himself, the big man that changed this archetype into the powerhouse that it is today, Eldane. Uh, on deploy, you transform all your face-up traps into Elven Deadass. So again, those three power elves, um, making sure that all your traps that you've played and triggered will now be transformed into three points. This card is easily 12, 15, 18 points, especially by the end of the final round. This is a huge finisher that just gives you value for all those useless sprung traps on the board. Um, on Devotion, which this deck actually has, you also transform your other artifacts. 
We have the scenario card in this deck. So be careful not to play this if your scenario card hasn't played out completely yet. But if you play Eldain at the very last, you also transform Fain Dead into another Elven Dada, giving you another 3 points on top of that. We also have Call of the Forest, which is a very good tutor, playing any Squirtel unit from your deck and boosted by one. This deck has devotion, so every unit in this deck is a Squirtel unit. So you can pull anything from the deck, usually um, reserved for your vet, Eldain, Vernociel, any golden card that you don't have in your hand just yet. And talking about Vernociel, she is also in this deck, because Vernociel was already very strong, but now with the ability of Eldain transforming all those traps into Elven Dead Eyes, Vernociel has become even stronger. She still has 12 provisions, so very costly. Vive power, and on deploy, if you put her on the melee row, each allied Elven Dada you have on the field damages a random enemy unit by two. So that could destroy your opponent's entire board if you have enough Elven Dead Eyes. You could have easily 10 of those on the field if you want to. But if you don't have enough to get the value out of them, you can also deploy Vernociel on the range row in case, in that case, she spawns two Elven Dead Eyes on this row, still giving you a whopping 11 points, which is still very good because those elves could still be boosted by Isengrim or uh, something like that. And then the very final card is the one I talked about already, the scenario card, Fame Death, giving you Vernociel's Commando on the first deploy, which is a 3 power bronze card that boosts yourself by 1 as long as you only have elves on the field. Um, then chapter 1, if you play another elf, you spawn 2 elven deadeyes in the row of the scenario. And then chapter 2, if you play another elven card, you spawn and play waylay, giving you the ability to deal 3 damage. And if you kill something with that 3 damage, you get another elven deadeyes. So this is 3 elven deadeyes and a Vernal Hills Commando. So 4 elves and a bit of extra damage. Very powerful, but of course a lot of Kuralti Heatwaves in the meta right now. So that card usually goes, but still, it's a very good option to fill your board rather quickly. That is the Elven Trappings deck. Um, let's head into an example match to see how this deck just obliterates your opponent in most cases. And we are facing Nilfgaard in the very first match, which is a rather good matchup. It's double cross, so they can play a card from our hand, but usually that's not so good for your opponent because there's... Ooh, wow, that's a very good draw. Uh, so basically we got all of our top cards. Um, the only thing that we're missing is the scenario cards. But I do have to be careful here because I don't want to overplay, although I can use most of this. Um, let's get rid of the crushing trap. And now it's a little bit risky, but let's get rid of the officer as well. Okay, we get another officer. That's fine to start. Um, usually what you want to try and do is have most of your bronzes in the first round so you can bait out your opponent just a little bit as we'll do in a minute um, hmm. I could actually put the sword master down first but she'll get locked immediately but it might as well happen right although I can take out that nausicaa sergeant with a bit of combined damage if I put the Dolblatana Bowman over here. Um, we do 3 damage. And that gives us a 1 power Nausicaa Sergeant. And then with the um, the officer over here, we'll be able to kill it. Yeah, because that's a 1 deployability. But now with the uh, the melee version of the Vrahead Officer, we'll be able to kill the Nausicaa Sergeant. So let's just put that down over there. And that kills at least that engine. Um, we're trying to lowball this here a little bit because our opponent will probably take round one here. I could start playing those golden traps already, but it feels like a bit of a waste. So we get bleeding from the Van Morlehem Hunter on our Vrahad Head Officer. Then, of course, I'm just gonna play it. It's gonna get locked. Uh, she's gonna get locked anyway, but because we can't use the melee ability right away, so that's gonna be just a lock from the color right on top of the Swordmaster. There we go, I saw it highlighted just a little bit already. There we go. That was to be expected. Still, we have three elves on the board, so we need to keep that in mind. Our opponent is going pretty wide, so I think the Crushing Trap will do some work. Um, let's put down the Pitfall Trap, because that's not gonna be something our opponent expects right now, and we will pull it back with your vet in a minute. So I'm just trying to see if I can still get over my opponent. We still have a little bit of time. I'm gonna have to be careful. 
Because our opponent is 14 points ahead now. If they spring the pitfall trap, we're going to have gained a bit more momentum. But still, it's not something that will tick us over, I think. They might want to try it now. Okay, so Imperial Diviner, that's 5 damage only. Um, and that at least gets rid of the armor. So if I now play your vet, I'm going to go to 9 points and I have the Crushing Trap. And the Crushing Trap is going to be 6 points guaranteed. Which means that I only need to play uh, 5 more points to get the round if they would pass. So let's get rid of the Pitfall Trap and play the Crushing Trap. That might actually be 8 points if our opponent plays any other units. Because your vet is an easy way to get your gold traps on the field, but then pull them back for later use. So wanted to use that pitfall trap later on, because of course our opponent hasn't played any gold cards just yet. Um, so that's going to come in really handy in the next round, because we know those high value cards are still waiting for us. Right now we have a full gold hand. Um, we did play Yorvet already, but there's still a lot of good cards in our deck. I might want to use... Ooh. Joachim. Huh. And we get a 12-point Poisoner on that same road. So that is 8 points for our Crushing Trap. So that brings us to 21. Meaning that we only need to do... Oh, damn, now I'm really, really tempted to use the Serpent Trap. It's usually when somebody plays Joachim, they want to play Coup de Grasse after that. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use Serpent Trap. Usually our opponents will try to play um, low power units as well, so I don't have any uses for the Spring ability. So I'm just going to risk it. Because I can still go over with Vernosiel. So this just gives us 8 damage, but if the Serpent Trap is now sprung, that's another 10 damage. Because that Poisoner is going to be transformed. Yeah, there we go. So that's what I was hoping for. So that's a special card. The special card triggers the Serpent Trap and kills that 10 power uh, Poisoner over there. We're still going to get about 8 points behind. Ooh. Yeah, okay, but it's high time to pass now. So that's Fergus Varemris. A lot of spying. Okay. But that's good. That's good. Um, they at least... They used Joachim. They used... Uh, Fergus is gone. And Coup de Grasse, but Coup de Grasse could come back. So... Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's pass. Nothing to worry about just yet. Because um, now we can actually show you how this deck is really annoying to play against as well. So, very bad mulligans, uh, very bad cards to get in the first round here, uh, well, in the, the second round here, wow. Okay, I'm hoping for a pass of my opponents, because right now my hand is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. I feel like my opponent isn't going to pass. Okay, they are. <laughs> Ooh, wow, okay, so definitely get rid of those Elven Scouts. Those are the lesser cards in this deck. Those uh, two-point boosts might sound good, but uh, usually your opponent takes that out before it can do any real harm. It's a good target to have taken out uh, to get rid of like stunning blows, gutting slashes, assassinations, so those five power, six power damage uh, special cards. But other than that, they're usually not that good. Okay, Elegant in our hand, that's good, because then we can mulligan her away. So let's do that. And we get the scenario card, okay. That is really good. Let's get rid of the Dragoon as well. And we got the Officer. I think we've, we've seen the Officer in our hand in every, uh, in every round now. But that is pretty good, because that means that we can pull Ebir. Yeah, Ebir we can pull with Call of the Forest. But let's start slow, right? Let's just use the Elven Swordmaster. And then, of course, the next uh, play we're going to have is start playing some of our traps, because... Right now, as you can see, we only have... Well, we have four elves. We can use uh, Call of the First to actually also pull an elf. And we get Empira Enforcers. Empira Enforcers. Okay. So that is actually pretty good. Um, let's put down... So that's a Temp Provision card, but... 
I think next up they're gonna have to play something bronze. They're not gonna wanna risk anything. And they wanna play a low provision bronze first because they feel like that might still be the pitfall trap. Yeah, there we go. So we can kill that Imperial Enforcer, the second Imperial Enforcer in one go. Is that something that we don't wanna have on the field? There we go, there we go. And we got one damage on top of that. Uh, we need to keep an eye out on our elves because of course the scenario card requires elves. Uh, we only have three in our hands, but remember you don't want to play Eldane on the scenario card because he will transform the scenario card before the scenario card triggers. Very important. Um, I'm just hesitating whether I should play the Pitfall Trap now. I should probably do that now. Uh, the chances of there being a higher power card right now is probably... No, let's just play it. Let's just play the Pitfall Trap now. Because that might be very powerful. Don't, we don't want to give our opponent too many um, targets. So that's another Imperial Force. So we can actually take that out with the Officer. Okay, so then we can take out the Imperial Enforcer in the back. Um, do we want to play... I think we want to play the scenario card next. We didn't get a load out of the pitfall trap, but at least it's something. So let's just do feign death. There we go. So the only annoying thing right now is that we won't be able to play Vernosiel to her full effect. I don't want to use her melee ability right now. And I think I might have played the scenario card on the wrong row. I should have played that on the front row. Ooh, that is, yeah, that is taking away five points from me. Because those were going to be five points regardless. Okay. But that means that the next up is going to be Coup de Grasse. Because Coup de Grasse is going to go on to Cantarella to try and pull another card. So I want to use Call of the Forest now. Put that on Hattori. Uh, there we go. Let's play Hattori. And then we play another... I'm going to play another Pitfall Trap. Um, that's going to be 9 points if played correctly. There we go. And then we put another damage on the Impera Enforcers. I mean, I could still use Vernossiel. I could still do that, actually. Yeah, we're going to use Vernossiel as our final play. Unless our opponent destroys like a whole bunch of uh, Elven Deadeyes now, because... That Pitfall Trap is going to be triggered regardless. So we have four cards that can be transformed into Elven Deadeyes. That's 12 points on top of the six of Eldane. So that's those 18 points that I was talking about. That gives us six Elven Deadeyes on the field. We can put three more on there. So that's nine Elven Deadeyes giving you 18 points in total. And that is really good. That is the highest provision we could go for. There we go. Top, 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 top. And that could actually kill... Oh, it doesn't. But this is actually very interesting. It could have killed the Usurper. And if that would have killed him, those two operat operatives would stay on our side of the field. Um, now, I need to be careful now because I want to actually kill the Enforcer and play another Elf before that. So I play the Enforcer like this. Now we get Waylay on top of the Usurper and we get another Elf and that. I forgot about that one. We got another one. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be really good. Uh, so that was the scenario card completely played out. We don't have a Serpent Trap anymore, so I'm guessing Good of Grass is going to... Ooh, Masquerade Ball. Interesting. Uh, and that's going to be Vernosiel, probably. They're going to probably grab Vernosiel with that. Because Vernosiel is just 11 points. And that is just really good. But they know what's coming now. Now we're doing pretty good, because the next one I'm going to play is the Cat Witcher. He's going to give us um, 10 more points, which is also very important if he doesn't get removed. Then we're going to play Eldane, and then we're going to play Vernosiel. So that's the final play, and that's going to give us so many points. You'll see that in a minute, and they're actually giving us more targets, because Vernosiel gives us those three Elven Dead Eyes again. Those two Elven Dead Eyes. So that's 11 points, but that's more targets for us to take out with our Elven Dead Eyes. So let's start with the Cat, which I need to count now, so... It goes to the ranged row. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's just put the Cat Witcher down. So that starts ticking down enemy units. So let's count the Elven Dead Eyes now. We're gonna get... Oh, that's actually good. So we're gonna get more space because the Cantarella stuff is gonna get removed. 
And we get another uh, Fangs of the Empire, so that's gonna poison. Did we have a poison already? No. They should probably poison the Venusial's commander or the Cat Witcher. They could destroy the Cat Witcher, yeah. They're gonna go for the Cat Witcher. It doesn't really matter. So that's also a very good advantage of this deck. You're going really wide, so it doesn't really matter what your opponent does. Because even if they remove a unit, it doesn't really matter all that much because all the units are four power max, so that is really good. Okay, so we have four artifacts on the field. So three traps and one scenario card. Now we're going to use Eldane to actually transform those cards into Elven Dead Eyes. So that was 18 points in one go. 18 points in one go and we get another two from the Cat Witcher. Still doesn't look like we're going to be winning. Um, but uh, that final burst that we're going to do with Vignosiel is going to be huge. So we're going to be playing three more Elven Deadites, giving us, if you're counting with me, 10 Elven Deadites. That's 20 damage on the other side of the board. There's a lot of one power units on the board right now. So that's going to be reduced significantly because of the, the uneven numbers. Um, but still, it's going to be more powerful than what we... Did before, so there we go. That goes over there, and that destroys. I don't know what that actually destroyed. What was that? Oh, Hatori. Okay, but that's good. Uh, let's just play three more Elven Dead Eyes on the back row, and then destroy just everything on the other side of the field. And there we go. We're double the points of our opponent, and another. <laughs> Another hit there. The Cat Witch actually survived, which is interesting. They're going to be able to poison again. So that's going to be four points, one point on the Thirsty Ding. And another four points for the Fangs of the Empire. So that's ten points in one go. But then they still need to do 20 points. And that's Coup de Grasse. So they can actually grab Bernocial again. That's actually pretty good. But it's not going to be enough, yeah, because I already get the notifications that I've won. That was actually pretty good, but uh, not enough. And they didn't have another uh, aristocrat to trigger the final part of Masquerade Ball. So that was a very good example of how the uh, Elven Trappings deck actually works. So on that match, if you have Isengrim as well at the very end, you can also boost that entire board by one if you want to. So even without some of the cards that we just used, this deck is still very powerful. But Eldane, as you saw, is just the uh, the crux of this deck right now because he just gives you, well, a lot of extra points because the traps are transformed, but then also gives you a lot of elves, which trigger on Vignosiel, which trigger on Isengrim Voltiagna, which is just so incredibly powerful and we didn't even use Mahakam Horn in this match but uh, I think we used most of the most powerful cards and I think the top six cards we used yeah so that was uh, we're, we're a bit lucky with our mulligans as well but uh, with Call of the Force you have a bit more consistency than you would otherwise so this is the Alvin Trappings deck. Um, you can check out the deck list and a short description of how you would usually play this uh, on, play, on the Play Gwent website. It's in the description down below, the link. Um, and other than that, this deck is so powerful that it beats almost everything else. I think the only real problem you might be facing is if you're facing something similar to this, um, when you're playing against traps while you're also using traps. At that point, it's, it's very important to have final say because the crushing traps are very good at dealing with your opponent's swarm. So if you're able to have final say, you can take out all those Elven Deadeyes that I just displayed on the board there really ne neatly um, and just damage them all by two. And even you could use multiple crushing traps to get to that end result. Because that just takes out your opponent's units. And even with Isengrim, they will only go to four. And that gives you just with two crushing traps enough targets to take out so many points um but still it's probably one of the harder matchups mirrors are very very tough to deal with so you want to try to be on the uh well the front foot not the back foot because you want to try and take out your opponent as quickly as possible and have that final say but against any other archetype the play is almost exactly the same you want to try and Try and get ahead in the first round, but it's not that important because uh, that final round, if you just try to play defensively, play a lot of traps, your opponent doesn't have a lot of units to work with. Um, it is a bit non-interactive, I realize that, but that's part of this archetype. It is back because it's basically the same thing as with Eldane's leader ability uh, when way back in the day when it was actually introduced originally. But uh, this is 
the Elven Trapping Stack. Let me know what you think. Because this has been the end of the first new Gwent Edge deck guide episodes with the new intro. So let me know what you think of that and let me know what you think of this deck. Because it's, uh, in my mind, probably one of the top meta decks right now. We'll see soon enough when the meta snapshots start to arriving. Because um, it's, it's just really powerful. I'm probably going to use this to get up to uh, the pro rank again. Because as you see, uh, I just went from 3 to 2 with just this as well. So uh, thank you guys. It's normally for watching. If you have any tips to improve this deck in its current state, because of course course it might still need a bit of optimizing let me know in the comment section down below because that's what we're here for after all we're trying to help each other out and try to get to as high as possible in the rankings so thank you guys enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode of grand thank you goodbye and stay nutty